All right, welcome back to the channel. And today we're gonna to be checking out Palo Alto Networks, uh, ticker simple P-A-N-W. And let's dive on into the five-year chart here. We can see that it has been ru 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 ruing <laughs> for the last five years. It's up a pretty decent amount. Um, five-year KGAR has been 34%, five-year returns 339%. Uh, from low, 540%, you know, it's mooning. Uh, market cap about uh, 98 billion. Revenue growth over the last five years has been about 24% average net income, 24% EBIT, 34% free cash flow, 23% operating cash flow, uh, 21%. But share count has risen on an average about 4.47%. And that's something that we will see with them is that they have been a little bit ac acquisitive in their ventures over the last five years. And some of that revenue growth has really been from acquisitions that they've actually done. So um yeah uh margins gross margin 72 percent uh let's see operating 5.62 ebit 8.22 net 6.38 free cash flow uh, 38.17 and for this analysis we are going to use free cash flow so that's going to be kind of the uh i don't know the med the main metric that we use for doing a, a relative valuation or a historical valuation analysis is gonna make free cash flow because EBIT and net income is kind of skewed in the case of Palo Alto. So let's go ahead and get into their, um, well, let's, let's go into a couple different things. Um, I'm not gonna dig into them like a ton because there's kind of a lot to go into and we covered kind of the basis of what Palo Alto and Fortinet do are similar and that was already covered in the Fortnite video so a couple of resources for you guys though if you want to dig into this more uh q4 fiscal year 2023 earnings call and medium term update this is a pretty good um document for you guys to go through i will have that linked in the video description also the q uh one 2024 earnings um definitely go through that but what we can see um that's happened over the last uh, well, over the last earnings is that they had a uh, revision down in their guidance, similar to Fortnite, but they're still growing at a decent pace. Total billings were they, they missed it was seventeen to nineteen percent year over year. Uh, they hit sixteen percent. Uh, total revenue was sixteen to eighteen percent year over year. They hit uh, what twenty percent, but that's uh, yeah. I want to look more at billings. Uh, product revenue three percent year over year. Um, I think they're yeah what they're non-gap eps eh, i wouldn't pay too much attention to that honestly but um so basically they revised down and then going forward their previous guidance for fiscal year 2024 was uh 19 to 20 percent year over year and they revised that down to about 16 to 17 percent year over year um their next gen security arr was going to be 35 to, or 34 to 35 that's uh Remaining the same total revenue, 1819 operating margin, 25 to 25.5. Now it's going to be 26 to 26.5. So probably cutting back on costs. Um, EPS 527 to 540, 540 to 553. Um, adjusted free cash flow, um, 37 to 38 percent, 37 38 percent. So they revised down basically on their total billings. Um, so it looks like they're probably seeing a little bit of a weakening in the core business and that's most likely going to be more on their like firewall products i'm guessing the thing that i would say with uh, palo alto compared to fortinet is both of them offer a lot of similar services and products um mainly you know they're kind of known or they were previously known for like firewall products um palo alto and fortinet being probably the two largest players in that hardware space and um, they've competed pretty, pretty heavily there over you know the last decade or so. Um, but now they're getting into a lot of these adjacent cybersecurity um, offerings. Um, both of them are kind of, kind of, I don't know, kind of doing the same thing. Not the same thing, but taking that holistic approach to try to offer complementary services along with their uh, firewall products. But I will say this, Palo Alto seems to be the leader, seems to be driving a lot of kind of where these companies are grow uh, going. And uh, from what I've seen, Fortinet kind of seems to be reactive. So when we look at Palo Alto and Fortinet, 
I would say Palo Alto is kind of the leader. They're higher quality. You know, if I was going to rate them, like, I don't know, like, if I gave uh, Palo Alto like a 92 out of 100, I'd give Fortinet probably like a, you know, 82 out of 100, right? Fortinet's a little bit lower, um, for sure. But uh, they, they have some things that are going for them as far as how they're managing their capital and focusing on profitability, while Palo Alto is really focusing on growth, focusing on market share. Um, they're not really afraid to pay up for acquisitions to get better product lines, more huh, synergies across the product lines um, in order to have a better overall offering. So let's go ahead and we're just gonna dive into, let's dive into the historical data here. Uh, income statement, we can see, hey, they've grown a ton. Um, yeah, what's new there? Let's uh, zoom out a little bit for you guys here. So yeah, they've grown a ton over the last decade. Nothing new. Um, Palo Alto has been uh, diluting consistently. Um, EPS just kind of started, actually. <laughs> Earnings per share, they just kind of went uh, um, positive on a uh, net basis. Uh, looking at their balance sheet, they have a... Nice amount of cash in hand. Um, let's see if this is right. Their short-term debt is around two billion or so. Cash on hand is about three point nine billion. So pretty, pretty good there. Um, now this is where we can see <laughs> their goodwill. You look at it, you can see the acquisition is kind of built into the goodwill right there, along with the share counts increasing and the debt increasing, along with those acquisitions. So. Something to take into account when we look at Fortinet's growth and Palo Alto's growth is that Fortinet's growth has largely been organic. They've done very, very, very little acquisitions um, on a dollar basis in order to achieve pretty much the same um, same growth. But Palo Alto, I would say, is the higher quality product and probably has a brighter looking future if they don't screw the pooch. Um, <laughs> as far as their product goes. So we looked at free cash flow, and this is this is where I would really want to um, do my valuation for Apollo. So it's based off of that free cash flow. Because as we can see, you know, their net income, their EBIT has not been, there's been a lot of, you know, uh, CapEx essentially that's driven that net income and EBIT down. Um, Stock-based compensation, yeah, you know what? They, uh, they do pay their employees. Uh, in stock, so you do have a little bit of drag in, in stock-based compensation. We can see that, see that here. Stock-based comp compared to their free cash flow is actually pretty dang high, and that's like another negative. Is like, okay, their free cash flow is pretty good, but most of that is being taken up on stock-based compensation. And we can also see in their income statements uh, a lot of their expenses. I mean, I believe it's a decent amount of their expenses is selling and uh, marketing expenses, right? So. Um, operating expenses is decent, sg &A is decent, but uh, selling marketing is pretty dang high. So they're paying a lot to, to get their name out there and, um, you know, basically sell that product, which um, I think they're being more aggressive in the sales and the growth side compared to Fortinet. But, um, you know, at the same time, like Fortinet's still done pretty dang good. So quality wise, you know, I get pull out to the edge for sure, um, at least with my experience with them. Uh, their product is better, um, and yeah, we'll see. We'll see if Fortinet ends up kind of closing that gap again. Sometimes these players will play leapfrog, where one outperforms the other, or outcompetes the other. Um, the product gets better, and then the other comes out and you know passes them up, and they go back and forth. So, um, but what I would say with the industry in general is that there's going to be plenty. There's going to be plenty of money to go around, right? And, man, they've actually done a decent amount of uh, Kamasaki purchases, but it just hasn't made a dent. Um, if we go to their, let's see, shares outstanding. We're good to see that. Uh, let's go over here to their shares outstanding. So even with the stock repurchases, um, their shares outstanding has increased pretty, pretty drastically. Um, so let's see, dilution, yeah, 4.47% over the last five years, average dilution. So let's get into the valuation here and let's, uh, let's see what we can find. So looking at their margins, you can see, um, 
uh, net margins and operating margins are fairly low compared to their free cash flow margins. That's why I want to go off of free cash flow because I think eventually um, that capex will subside and essentially they will um, grow into profitability more in line with their free cash flow. I think it'll just work better on a historical model as well. Uh, bottom line yields, yeah, we can see <laughs> they trade trade pretty freaking expensively, right? So I think uh, what Fortinet was out like a four around four point two free cash flow yield. Um, Palo Alto was at a two point one two. So, and I believe what Palo Alto was guiding now for about fifteen percent growth, something like that. So. Um, yeah, so when we get into the valuation here, let's go ahead and these are my assumptions. We're still doing the 20% target rate, just like we did in a four net. Um, margin safety is 2.5%, uh, base KGR is 7.5%, so we get to that, or 17.5%, so we get to that 20% margin of safety rate. We're doing a free cash flow only analysis. Um, we're muting the dilution going forward to um, best case scenario 2%. Scenario 5 is going to be 2.4% average dilution. Scenario 1 is going to be 4.32% uh, average dilution. Their growth, um, and this is going to be really their free cash flow growth. If we go down, we can see that their free cash flow growth historically over the last five years was about 23.25%. And what I'm doing is I'm doing like a, uh, you know what, let's do a little bit more. Let's do a little bit more. Let's do that. So best case scenario is going to be 30%. Worst case scenario is going to be a 12.39%. Uh, scenario 2, 15.49%. Scenario 3, 19.37%. Scenario 4, 24.21%. And then we're going to go to our yield spread. And this is actually where I need to kind of probably mess around. Uh, let's see. Because I want to get this up to a little bit wider of spread. All right, and we're back. So um, after some finagling, I got the <laughs> the uh, yield multiple in the best case scenario is 2%, and the worst case scenario is 4%, which I think is pretty, like, I don't know, that's pretty generous, I think, of me. Um, if I wanted to, I could probably take that yield multiple, like, pretty much a little bit higher in the worst case scenario, scenario one. But um, yeah, with that being said, we got our scenario one buy price of $83, scenario two buy price of 113, scenario three of 160, scenario four of 237, scenario five of uh, 381. Um, got the, uh, let's see, five year targets for scenario one be 217, scenario two be 296, scenario three be 418, scenario four be 620, scenario five would be uh, 995. So, I mean, yeah, like, this thing is priced for pretty pretty rapid growth, uh, continued rapid growth. I don't know. Yeah, they might be able to recover some of their uh, free cash flow margins, so maybe they can, you know, grow at twenty percent and then increase their margins um, and be able to get to that like thirty percent uh, growth rate on their free cash flow. Totally doable. Um, they are definitely uh, growing at a much faster pace than Fortinet. And for good reason, I think, um, I would not be surprised if they continue to um, break into new areas of cybersecurity and take those customer bases or start to take some of those customers, but also take some of the customers from Fortinet. So that wouldn't shock me. Um, I just think you know, it's hard to say either way. You don't, you don't have a crystal ball, right? So uh, these two are ones where I think you have... Um, two really solid companies. Um, they're just a little bit in different states. I don't think it's gonna be winner take all, right? And you have the top two players. So even if Fortinet doesn't win out over Palo Alto, they could continue to grow at a really good pace and you know return capital to shareholders, buybacks, um, and their stock could do really good over the long term. Even if they're, you know, growing at say like fifteen percent compared to Palo Alto growing at like twenty percent, something like that. So potentially. Um, so yeah, I think Palo Alto is uh, really, really interesting. I would actually like if valuation was pretty much identical, I would choose Palo Alto over Fortinet any day. Um, but I think Fortinet is potentially presenting a better opportunity currently. Palo Alto, I believe, is going to be more U.S.-based, more um, exposed to 
uh, U.S. economic trends. Uh, Fortinet is going to be more exposed to Europe economic trends. Um, so we'll see. We'll see how it plays out. I'm interested in both of them. I'm interested in a lot of cybersecurity companies. I'm just trying to find like good price points to where we can actually, where I can actually, you know, establish positions in them. So if we go back over to the overview, we can see that. So that 160, 160 buy point is really probably what I'd be eyeing um, in this scenario two, scenario three. So, and we can see over there in, well, right before the run up of 2023, it did get to about 137, 135. So, it got into an interesting area, for sure. Um, I was just distracted with other things at the time. So uh, Palo Alto will be one that remains on my watch list. I would love to see some negative, you know, maybe cyclicality to it. And maybe it can maybe it can sell down a bit. It's on a, a little tiny, tiny pullback right now. But uh, we'll see what happens. Hope you guys had a great weekend, and we'll catch you in the next one. As always, I am not a financial advisor and none of this is financial advice. This is just my musings on another company and another potential valuation. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the like and subscribe button and we'll see you in the next one.